ये ये वीडियो वाला अच्छे भी बाय बाय खबर कोड़ी बो गोदम समाज सारे जो भी जॉइन कोड़ी से हेलो लानू मैम हेलो मैम मैम आपुनी अनम्यूट कोड़ी बा पढ़ी बा निज़ा के अनम्यूट ऑप्शन है तो आप सोचोगे मैम ओ मैम गोटम समाचार आही सेन की हेलो सर बोटम समाज सर इज हियर विथ अस सर आपुनी अनम्यूट करबो पारिबो सर अनम्यूट ऑप्शन ता आसे आपुना ताते रेड कलर म्यूट ऑप्शन ता आसे एतु क्लिक करि दियोक सर तलले आसे सर तल दुलाबो म्यूट बिलिया ता ऑप्शन आसे सर हेतु अनम्यूट कर दियो गोगोय सर आसे न अमर लगो आशा से गोगोई सर से गोगोई सर अनम्यूट पुनीस ने किया मैं सर पुनीस सर मैं अनम्यूट कर ही लाले गौतम सर और पीपीटी ऐसे नहीं की सर Thank you. 
Sagar ka ba abar sundragan the saal abar kotha pata patile kam kam sagar saal aur kya admit kya pora nahi? Tika sa, hmm, ma phone ata koriye sa. Google sir unmute Kori sir. Mute phone I gindo. Yate. Mute ho yeh sir. Oh, sorry. Nije unmute kora bolii kolle. Ami Kori dille hobo niki na hobo no. Ma, ma aaj to unmute kora parim. Gogo sir, apunar unmute hua na is sir. Hua na. Etia hoy sir. Etia hoy sir. Oh, okay, yes, hoy sir. Hoy sir. Etia kahle video to hoy. Huni sir. Oh, okay, guys. Hmm. Good afternoon, Professor Sharma. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Professor Sharma. Professor Sharma, good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. We can yeah. hear. Yes, sir. Yes. Gogo, sir, shall we start? It's already time. Yes, yes, yes. Please. Please start. Unisena, Matu. Nepali, we are starting. Yeah. A very good evening to everybody present here. Very I am good Dr. evening. I am Dr. Sagarika Mohanta Das, Assistant Professor of the Program of English, Assam Downtown University. Assam Downtown University is committed to the task of spreading knowledge and wisdom at all times. As part of this endeavor, 
when people are socially and physically experiencing isolation and distance we have been continuously trying to fill this gap by hosting webinars and discussions on different aspects of life and its relation to difficult times as such today once again we are here and today's topic is literature and the uses of adversity literature has been there, always there with mankind previously it was in oral form now it is in written form it is there to teach us to instruct us to entertain us and always to give us a hope that difficult times are not forever it will we human being will overcome this today i take the honor of welcoming our speaker dr gautam sharma sir who is the former head of the english department of cotton university and presently he is appointed as professor of assam downtown university i thank our former dean dr seema sharma ma'am for giving us the opportunity to host this webinar i welcome you ma'am i welcome our dean of of humanities and social science dr chandrakanta gogoi sir and the head of our department dr lonu devi ma'am i also extend a very hearty welcome to everybody present here today who is here to share their views and attend the discussion on literature now i request our dean sir dr chandrakanta gogoi to please deliver the welcome address thank you very much sir am i am i audible to you yes, yes sir acha good afternoon to especially professor sharma and this seminar organizer dr sagarika and esteemed participants and my colleagues i feel glad to say just a few line just one or two line and to welcome professor sharma and to welcome all the distinguished participants to this gathering online and thereby i want to convey the message that the department of the faculties of english of assam downtown university is organizing this very interesting discussion literature and the uses of adversity basically i am not a man of literature what we call english literature but basically i am a student of sociology social science but even then the some of the very interesting meaning of the term adversity and its different dimension and issues in society it attracts not only the people of literature it attracts the man of all the faculties and man and intellectuals of social sciences and therefore the discussion and the deliberation on this particular issue will definitely carry a great meaning to the rapidly changing social structure and social dynamics of our society adversity therefore it is a part of our discussion it should be a part of attraction it should be a part of intellectual curiosity i believe professor sharma will deliver the very meaningful and meaningful deliberation today and the participants of this this gathering will definitely be enlightened and their fruitful discussion will definitely bring some important outcome as a result of this discussion i sincerely believe participants will be benefited faculty will be highly benefited and the the faculties will carry out a very meaningful outcome after this discussion i do not take much time as the organizer has already informed me that time is very limited therefore it is my pleasure to welcome professor sharma mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
discussion <laughs> and with these few words i request and i shall be listening to an as an obedient student on this particular topic yeah. and i'll listen to professor sharma and the discussion of other participants this evening and i feel pleasure to say these few words as form of inaugural speech thank you very much professor sharma thank you very much this distinguished organizers sagarika Thanks. and other faculty colleagues thank you thank you gogoi sir thank you thank you so much uh, before our sharma star starts his deliberation i would like to give a very brief introduction dr gautam sharma sir had been the former head of department of english in cotton university he has several articles published in books and journals to name a few books witness to change readings in literature nagaland university anthology of prose and short stories this is published by macmillan and this book is used as textbook both for ba honors and ms students of uh, english for nagaland university then sir has written at the frontier and beyond literature and its relations again published by macmillan sir has many papers published in national and international journals his recent publication in asmis is Dr. Hiran Gohai Dristit Shakespeare or Hamlet in Prabhat Bora edited Dr. Hiran Gohai Bastobor Setona Aru Sopno Sir has translated several Assamese short stories of renowned Assamese writers including Mamuni Roysam Goswami and Sila Bhadra in English Sir has been the editor of many journals he is the content writer for the books of KKH SOU that is uh, Krishna Kanta Handikoy State Open University for both undergraduate and PG courses he is a content writer of english text of seba assam then again english and alternative english text of assam high secondary uh, secondary education council sir is presently the phd guide for the scholars uh, under guwahati university and assam downtown university Sir is associated with several social and public organizations like Lo Rotary Club of Guwahati. He is a member of Assam Academy for Cultural Relations. Sir has been invited as resource persons to several uh, seminars and uh, literary organizations. He had been the chairperson of several national and international seminars. and sir has been invited as subject expert by apsc on numerous occasions he has been invited as sub subject expert nominee uh, of the honorable vice chancellor guwahati university sir has visited various colleges across the state of assam as nominee of the honorable vice chancellor guwahati university for inspecting the eligibility or otherwise for opening ba pass and major subjects in different disciplines that was a very brief uh background i have told about sir due to time constraint i once again thank you so much gautam sir for accepting my request for being a resource person of today's webinar uh, sir uh, please uh, start the webinar with your insightful talk thank you sir thank you everyone uh, present here And I take this opportunity to thank the organizers, uh, especially uh, Varika, uh, who has been kind enough to invite me uh, to the seminar, uh, the webinar. So that is uh, one of the advantages of adversity. Yeah. Instead of seminar, we are having a webinar. Yes. Okay. So uh, although it was a slip. Now uh, that also that sleep also is in a way kind of an advantage. So anyway, uh, since uh, I don't have time, we are uh, without much ado, we will uh, stand the discussion itself. And uh, as was agreed upon, I'll be talking on uh, literature and the uses of adversity. You know, we know uh, that we are all going through a very difficult phase because of the 
pandemic. And uh, when we say pandemic, what we understand is uh, is a uh, is a is a worldwide spread of uh, new disease at the same time simultaneously affecting a large number of people. So this is what exactly the coronavirus is doing today. But I won't be talking on this coronavirus. Uh, but I'm just touching upon this aspect of pandemic just because it happens to be an illustration of adversity, okay? And uh, you know, there have been so many pandemics in the history of civilization, beginning with you know, uh, the plague of Athens, for example, which occurred in 430 BC, killing uh, nearly two third population of Athens at that time. And this was followed by another plague, known as Antonine Plague, uh, which occurred in 165 AD, and it killed 5 million Romans, nearly one third of the population of Rome at that point of time. Then there was the Plague of Justinian, which occurred in 531 AD. These also killed 50 million people, 26% of the world population. Then. then there was the, the famous Black Death of 1350. This is also known as the Babonic Plague. And uh, it struck both Europe and Asia and killing one third of the population of the world at the time. Then again, uh, there was the Great Plague of London of 1665. Okay. Then the Great Flu, which was also known as the Spanish Flu. And again, you know, the Asian Flu, which again took place in you know, and it originated in China. And it also killed 50 million people. And after that, we have this coronavirus. So this pandemic that we are experiencing now is not something that has come for the first time. Things have been there, pandemics have been there, epidemics have been there, and there have also been literatures on such kind of pandemics and epidemics. Okay, for example, the plague. This is a very famous book by Albert Camus, the French novelist. Uh, this is based in, you know, uh, uh, based on the, uh, the Algerian city of Oran. So I won't go into the details. We don't have the time for that. And this is supposed to be a kind of an existentialist classic. The plague, the plague by Camus. Then we have books like, you know, Blindness by Joss. Saram, Sarama, what was his name? Saramazo. Yes, Saramazo. Joe Saramazo, his book called you know, Blindness is another book on pandemic. Then, End of October, another book by Lawrence Wright. Cinder, another book by Marty Samir. Then, The Great Influenza by John Barry of 2004. I mean, published in 2004. And then, as recent a book as uh, Station 11, published in 2014, by Emily Mandel. So these are some of the... Good evening, sir. Books. Sir... Yes. Sir, uh, yes. good evening, sir. Sir, actually, we are not able to hear you properly. Oh, you can't hear me at all, or, uh, uh, or sir, there is some kind of network issues uh, where your voice is breaking uh, continuously. Therefore, I think uh, we can properly. Can you hear me now? Sir, we can hear you. The problem is that uh, your voice is breaking. We can hear you, but it's not uh, clear uh, enough to understand. What do I do then? <laughs> I have the gadget in front of me. I have um, uh, this um, handset. I'm talking here. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Like now, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, you have brought it closer. I have brought it closer. Can you hear yeah, me now? It's better, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's better, sir. It's Clear. better. Is, am, I, am, am I audible or not? Yes, am sir. I, am I? Okay. In that case, I'll have to hold the handset now in my hand. Okay. Yes, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Okay. And I so you on? can uh, switch off your video, then I think your voice will be much more audible if you off your video, probably. Of the, let me see. I'm not a computer savvy or cyber savvy. Anyway, uh, if you can hear me now, can I continue? Because uh, we have the constraints of time. Is yeah, it okay sure. now? Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Is it okay? Yeah, uh, yes. Sure. So, 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 so far, I have actually named a few, you know, books. Occasion by pandemics. I have defined pandemic. I have given a few examples of pandemics in the history of civilization. And I have named a few books. Okay, I won't go back to that. And then I won't be able to proceed if I should go back again. Will that do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if that is okay, uh, then I'll be talking on the topic itself. Okay, see. Uh, I have uh, called it uh, literature and the uses of adversity. And when I say uses, I'll actually be talking of the benefits of adversity. In this, okay. the title itself <laughs> derives from the expression uses of adversity actually derives from uh, Play by Shakespeare called As You Like It. We will come across an expression, you know, sweet are the uses of adversity. So I'll have to begin with that. Okay. Am I audible now? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Aha. Madam, I'm going to talk about the gun. Oh, sir. Hi, hi. Otherwise, uh, I'll go on speaking, and if you don't actually if you hear me, it will be an exercise to me. Okay, uh, so uh, as you like it, so many of you are actually familiar with this book at this students of literature. Uh, sir, uh, sir, yeah. there, I, uh, sir, uh, upon our moment, the uh, phone to basically move Korea, sir, Karana, actually, voice to basically talk to you, sir. Phone to the problem. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, uh, Shakespeare's As You Like It. Okay, many of you are probably familiar with this play. This is a pastoral comedy. Uh, now, in this play, there is a situation where a duke, known as Duke Senior, is illegally deposed and exiled by his brother, Duke Frederick. So because of which he is removed from the dukedom or the duchy and we find him uh, in a forest known as the forest of Arden, okay? Along with a few of his followers. Now, when he comes to the forest, as you can imagine, he certainly doesn't have the kind of, you know, the prerogatives, the privileges, the accoutrements that go with the dukedom or the courtly life. So now he is away from all that. He has all kinds of disadvantages. Yet he says he is happy in the midst of all the adversities. And then he says, no, sweet are the uses of adversity, which like the toad 
ugly and venomous. There is yet a precious jewel in his head. So he likens adversity to a toad. Why? Because he means to say that on the face of it, on the surface, this adversity looks as ugly as the toad itself. The toad, uh, as we've all seen, is uh, you know, definitely a beautiful creature. Uh, so he says it is as ugly as the toad. But at the same time, the toad, he says, has a jewel on its head. And it's a precious jewel. And it can be a kind of a kind of an antidote for the kind of poison that the tooth sometimes emits from its skin. So it is believed. So he is therefore telling us something about the salubrious and the wholesome effects of adverse. Then he talks of his own life and he says, and this our life, exempt from public haunt. Find stones in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. Okay? So he says, see, we are away from the, court, the pleasures of courtly life. We do not have the comfort of courtly life. We do not have the prerogatives, the privileges. Yet, this is a blessed life. Why? Because he says here there is no artificiality of any kind. Here, there are no schemings, no plottings, no conspiracies of any kind. Here, there are no murderous intentions, no sinister mechanisms of any kind. It is an absolutely wholesome life that we are living, where we are being educated by nature, where the trees speak, where the trees have tongues, where the brooks serve for the books. So there is an entirely wholesome life. So this is one of the examples that we find about the sweet uses of adversity in literature. There are many such. Now when we go, yes, are you here? Can you hear me now? Am I okay? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's much better uh -huh. now, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, now, after that, see, there are, you know, uh, the poems of Wordsworth, for instance, which we are all familiar. Right, for example, you say a oh, very uh, simple poem, Daffodils. Many of you would be probably familiar with this poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Yes? Aren't you familiar with the poem? I wandered lonely as a cloud. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? We are very much familiar, sir. Uh -huh. Sometimes, uh, so please respond. Ah, okay, so when I say, uh, are you familiar? Yes. So anyway, uh, so here you see he talks of the bliss of solitude. And solitude, you know, comes in a way as a kind of adversity at times, but he says, no, it has its own bliss. Okay? Yes, and sir. if you remember, if you remember those lines there, uh, when upon uh, my coach I lie, couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood. And he goes on to talk about the peace of solitude there. Huh? He talks of the, you know, the daffodils. He says, when I, you know, he goes back to the past and he tries to recollect the scene. And he says, uh, I gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. You know, I was, when I was observing the scene there, I was not quite uh, 
you know, share about the fact that this would be a kind of wealth for me in the future. But now when I lie upon my couch, he says, you know, the flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with, with the daffodils. Okay, now we don't have the time to go into the details, but here he is talking of the bliss of solitude. There is a, a difference between being lonely and being alone. When you feel lonely, you are depressed. But if you are alone, then you can enjoy the bliss of solitude. Also, this is what he says there. Okay, then you, we have, you know, such beautiful poems like, you know, uh, Ulysses, Ulysses by Tennyson, for example. Okay, where he talks of uh, uh, his adventures, he talks of his adversities, and then he says, you know, I can never rest from life. So he says, I'm old. He, you no, know, Ulysses comes back to his kingdom. He, you know, he's asked to be the ruler once again. He spends some time there and he says, no, this is not my cup of tea. I am meant for a life of adventure, so I have to go out. Now, whatever adversities I have to face, I'll face them all. Because we have but only one life. Life piled up on life were all too little. And the one left to me, a little remains. So he goes on. okay, And he says, uh, we have to uh, make the best use of the one life that has been given us. He said, because there is so much to learn, so much to know, so much to see. Okay? And one life is not enough. Life piled upon life. We're all too little. But we have but only one life. And so do not think about the disadvantages of life. Do not think about the adversities. Try to turn all this to your advantages. Try to know, try to learn, because even the adversities, the disadvantage will educate you. There is a saying, there cannot be any, any education without adversity. Okay? So adversity, therefore, has a kind of cathartic event effect on us. So this will bring us to another genre of literature. When I talk of the cathartic effect. Okay? So I would like to dwell upon the genre known as tragedy. Okay? So students of literature are all familiar with tragedy. Right? Yes, sir. So Yes. So, uh, when we talk of tragedy, we know that a tragedy has to fulfill certain requirements. Okay? Especially a play. In order to be a tragedy has to fulfill certain requirements. And uh, tragedy down the ages have conformed to uh, the you know, principles laid down by Aristotle. If you have all heard of his poetics. Yes, sir. Right? Uh, right. And uh, in the poetics, again, he is trying to defend the poets against the charges leveled by Plato in his Republic. You know, in the, you know, Plato in his Republic, he you know had banished the poets, saying that the po poets are of no use because. They are the imitators of imitations and therefore are thrice removed from reality. Okay, and then he says the poets will have a bad, you know, will be a bad influence on the citizens of uh, the Republic and all that. So anyway, uh, I won't go into all those details. Now, Arist Aristotle, although he was a disciple of Plato, okay, he goes against his master. And he comes to the defense of the poets. Then he, by trying to defend the poets, of course, 
uh, when he talks of the poets, you know, he is not talking at all. He's not talking of uh, you know the versifiers only, because poetry, you know, in those days had a different meaning. It's good for all kinds of creative potential. But sculpture, painting, music, uh, the literature that we know would, would all come within the purview of poetry. Because poetry comes from theosis, which again means to make. Okay? So he says, okay, this is Aristotle. He said, okay, what you are saying about uh, imitation is okay because these poets are all imitations. But at the same time, you have also to recognize the fact that all artists imitate. Okay? Uh, and then uh, he goes on to define tragedy because tragedy is also a kind of imitation. Okay. So in tragedy, what happens is tragedy, he says, is the imitation of an action that is serious, has some magnitude, and then he goes on to some of the proprieties, right? You know that the uh, tragedy depicts the fall of a great man. Okay. Then he has a tragic flaw known as Hamartia. And then there is another very important aspect, which is important for us now. And that is, he says, a tragedy, that is a play in order to be a tragedy, must be able to arouse the feelings of pity and terror in order to accomplish the catharsis. This is what is important for us. That is, now catharsis. What is this catharsis? This is a kind of purgation. And a kind of purgation that leads to purification. That leads to cleansing. And, uh, you know, uh, this actually originates from you know, the concept of menstruation itself. Okay, because that is the Greek word for menstruation. Because it has a similar kind of function, he tells us. He says that, you know, when this thing happens, you know, the menstruation, there, I mean, some impurities of the body flow out. Uh, and then what happens? There is a kind of cleansing activity. It leads to creativity. Okay. When this doesn't happen, then there is some kind of an anomaly in the bodily system. That is what we believe. Similarly, he says, we use different kinds of emotions. You know, we do not laugh and cry at the same time. But when we laugh or when we cry, we are being prompted by an emotion. So we have different kinds of emotions within us. Similarly, we have the emotions of pity and terror also within us. So he says, all these emotions are expected to be in a state of equilibrium for good health. If any of these emotions are in excess of the others, or if it is less, then it is likely to impair the system. And then he goes on to say that we have these emotions of pity and terror in us, and there is a possibility of these emotions of pity and terror being in excess, which is why that is likely to impair the system. So he says, what does the traffic play do for us? It arouses the feelings of pity and terror in us in order to accomplish the catharsis. That is the excess of the emotions of pity and terror are all purged out. And that activity, that purgation itself now leads to purification. Okay? And this is something that we witness in the tragedies, huh? right from the days of the, play, the Greek playwrights. You know? there, it is said that uh, the world has produced four great tragedians, and three of them are Greeks. 
okay, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, okay, and the fourth is an Englishman, and we know who that Englishman is, is Shakespeare. Yeah. Okay, so we find this element of catharsis and in tragedy. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Uh, what happens here? See, you have all read, you know, the plays like Macbeth, Hamlet, Lear, Othello, and we come here uh, to such situations and predicaments which involve adversity. If there is no adversity in tragedy, there won't be a tragedy at all. Okay? Because we always find the forces of good and evil. There is always a perennial clash, a conflict between the forces of good and evil in a past. We have the forces of good on the one hand and pitted against the forces of the good, we have evil, right? Think of any of these plays, say Hamlet. Okay, in Hamlet, we have Hamlet on the one hand, okay, and then we have Polonius, we have Claudius. Okay, so these are the people who belong to the forces of the evil. Hamlet, with, Hamlet has Horatio with him. Okay, so they belong to the other, other camp, the forces of good. Okay, and then we see the hero in each of these tragedies as a kind of an example. This hero is someone you know, who enter, encounters all kinds of adversities. Okay? Yes, and sir. finally, finally, he sacrifices himself for the greater good of the society. Now, say, for instance, in the case of Hamlet, okay, what happens here? Hamlet, you know, uh, finds that his father has been murdered by his own uncle, Claudia. Okay, and therefore, he is in a state of terrible turmoil, emotional turmoil. And then he has this famous soliloquy. In Shakespeare's tragedies, you come across these soliloquies where you come to know of the adversities, the kind of predicaments in which the individual is placed. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Ah. Ah. Yes, sir. <laughs> then, Say that famous pitch, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take up arms against the sea of troubles. And so this you know. So you have an individual here where he finds that the, all the odds are against him. So he is facing a sea of troubles. Okay? Yet he knows that he has to be a representative of the good. He has to, therefore, sacrifice his life for the greater good of the society and the community. So what does he do? He knows that he has to now uh, he uh, you know, there's a mission of revenge there. Okay, so he has to embark upon the mission of revenge. He has to avenge the death of his father. But while doing that, he must also take care to show that he is not fulfilling any individual grudge 
point taking approach. Okay, it is as a public because he is the prince of Denmark. So he is a public figure and therefore he has certain public responsibilities to pay. Okay? Yes. Uh, so therefore now, what does he do? You find it now, we don't have the time to do things. So finally he kills the king. King means the usurper, Claudius. And with that, of course, Order is restored, but a precious life is also lost. Hamlet himself is also killed. Okay. So, this adversity finally leads to a greater good. But a precious life is, of course, wasted, but he becomes the you know, exemplum of society. It is through his life and career that the survivors come to know of the evil machinations of society. You know, people come to know of the sinister machination, of the murderous intentions, of the evil that looms large in the society and how we need to tackle them, how we need to face them. Okay? And this we come to know from the life and character of Hamlet himself. Similarly, in the case of the other plays also, whether in Macbeth or Othello or in Lear, you come across many such instances. Okay? So all these finally come to tell us something about the cathartic effect of adversity. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir, there is a question. There uh -huh. is a question. Uh, so, what are the yes. prominent examples of this uh -huh. optimistic note emanating from ever adversity in Indian literature in English? Look, so, this is a see, question um, from R.T. Majumdar. Okay. So, there are plenty of examples, you know, if uh, you cannot talk of any particular book or poem because. Uh, See, uh, if you have re uh, read, uh, you know, uh, things like uh, Jumpalahiri, okay, okay. Um, um, Ati, I don't, I haven't met you, but have you read Jumpalahiri by any chance? Jumpalahiri. Jumpalahiri, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, interpretation now, so if you read interpretation, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, melody. interpretation of melodies, okay? Yes, sir. Yes. And uh, then you find plenty of examples there itself. Okay? Uh, so we don't have the time to go into the... Uh, there's a story called Temporary Matter, for instance. If you have read that, you know. Okay, so similarly, you know, uh, Indian literature is so very rich that I cannot think of any particular book at the moment. If you have any specific question about any book, then probably I'll be able to say, because the same theory applies. Okay, from, uh, say for example, uh, right now, hmm, uh, can you understand? As me, I mean, I don't know who the uh, questioner is. So I'm just giving you an example. See, in a story, there's a story called Glory, for example. Okay. So, throughout uh, the story, you come to know of uh, 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 the kind of evil being perpetrated upon the marginalized, okay? the, the female, uh, by the, the, the husband. But towards the end, again, you know, there is so much of recompensation and all that. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have read the stories of Tagore, there are plenty, many of them. So, uh, Kabuliwala. So, uh, you know, Tagore has so many of them. If you have read Asmi's literature, Bhavendranath Kaikya, uh, so many examples are there. Sarat Sundra, for example, in Bangalore, so many examples are there. So, I mean, plenty of them. 
we have literatures where you know we have adversities there and adversities finally lead to good that is lead to good means we are made aware of situations even when there are negative situations we come to know about the impact of such you know such, situa such situations and how to handle them and to how to put them to the best uh, kind of use the negatives also tell us something about the way we need to handle them and how we can move forward okay say for example today now we are talking of webinars we are talking of online classes all these are being done because of the adversities otherwise today instead of an instead of a webinar we would have had a seminar right we right. are having online classes today but online classes again you know there are some disadvantages and we come to know of the disadvantages of online online classes because we have taken this online classes we know that you know this online classes uh, do not reach everyone okay so that will again force us to think of other strategies which probably would be uh, you know helping the economically handicapped those have not who have not been the beneficiaries of the online classes so in this way you know adversity is half there on advantages on snapchats have i answered you yes sir uh, yes sir uh, Atri Majumdar is very much satisfied with your answer, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Anything uh, else? Uh, we don't have much time left. Any? If I should continue, or you have yeah. questions? Uh, participants, I would like to ask you: Do you have any more questions for sir regarding today's topic? Uh, Sagarika, can I speak two lines? Sure, sure, ma'am. Sure. Sure, ma'am. Uh, Gautam, uh -huh. yes. nice seeing you after such a long time. Are, are you Lonu by now, by any chance? Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> I can hear you, boys, but I, I don't see you here anyway. Huh? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so nice to see you here also. Yes. Your talk was indeed very interesting. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I was sitting all along with a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, <gotcha>. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to every bit with so much of emotional intensity, intensity that right. now I feel that there can be a PhD thesis on this. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. If candidates come up, any candidate mm -hmm. comes up to do PhD, you can suggest this topic for yes. research. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I yes. feel I don't know, you will know better than that. Uh, no yes. student has worked in this line. Yes, and not uh, particularly as such. Not particularly. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. That is what I feel now. It's such a beautiful topic, actually. And we Thank never, you so much, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. We never I think. Seen, uh, I have not been able to do that. So just yes, actually, you know, because of time constraint, so I'm just touched upon a few things. Right, yeah. sir. Right, sir. And we are we are responsible for this, sir. We couldn't <laughs> give you enough time, sir. You are a storehouse of uh, knowledge and information, sir. We would yes. love to have you once again, sir, sometime in near future. I'd like to be there also. Thank you so much. When you meet uh, Gautam. Yes, I, yes. I personally feel that I learn something every time. Oh, I really? would talk to him. Right, ma'am. Right. You're very that. right, ma'am. He's like my old brother because we meet quite often at uh, sometimes, but nowadays for a long time I have not met him. Yeah, unfortunately, we have not been able to meet each other for quite some time now. Otherwise, uh, we used to meet every day. Because uh, not only because uh, we both work in Cotton College, but then there was another association. We are all Rotarians. She was an Interville member. I was a Rotarian. And yes. 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 So, but today I see you much younger. So I feel very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? After a few years of retirement. <laughs> yes, you look younger. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so so that the university, please give me a ring, Gautam, so that we can meet. Ah yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful session we had. As if thank we you, had we have gone back through uh, the history of literature, and I believe that. we have so many participants who are not from english background english literature background but still they, mm -hmm. i believe that they have enjoyed a lot because sir you have generalized our literary genres and its usefulness yes sir so that was a wonderful session sir i thank you once again and due mm -hmm. to come time constraint we couldn't continue but uh, we hope to uh, held such literary talks sir once the lockdown is over I think this is going to benefit our students also a lot. We have I'll today be, among be, our so happy to be a part of it. Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, today, sir, uh, we I have my colleagues plus students also. There are students also, sir, from uh, different backgrounds. Uh, so they are very much interested. So uh, they like your talk so much, sir. Oh, I wish I uh, I could meet them. Uh, let's yeah, see after sir, the lockdown yes, if we could meet. Okay. Yeah, sure, sir. So I once again thank uh, our former dean, she, Dr. Seema Sharma, ma'am, for her uh -huh. support throughout my uh, our dean of humanities and social science, Dr. Gogoi, sir, yes, our sir. HOD, Lonu, ma'am, and all my colleagues, and especially my fellow colleagues, uh, Deepali Bhattacharjee. She is the one who has uh, controlled the all uh, technical parts, sir, today. Uh, Deepali, okay. A special uh, thanks to her from my side also. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> and uh, to Papori Kolita and Shilpi Sudha Goswami for their constant support. And I thank all my uh, esteemed and respected colleagues from Assam Downtown University for being with us today. And my students, I thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Thank you, sir. See you again in near future, sir. Thank, thank you. you so very much. Are, thank you so yeah, very much. Thank everyone. We are ending the session here. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you.